Hello, everyone. We'd like to share with you some thoughts on culling cows and marketing strategies for cull cows following drought. This will be a team presentation. I will introduce the topic. Dr. Hernan Tejada will share some market information on both cull cows and feed commodities. And then I'll conclude the presentation with some least cost examples and some strategies for recovering market value on cold cows. We'd also like to recognize our other colleagues in this effort, and that's Ashley Westerhold and Joel Packham. So let's consider a decision tree for culling cows. And this is my strategy. Uh, you may have your own strategy, but I think some things to consider would be the first cows to go should be the ones that have some type of structural uh, defect or something that's going to be uh, impacting the performance of those animals in the herd. And then, of course, open cows should be the next ones to go. The ones that I would consider next would be cows that are nine years of age or older. It usually is more difficult for those cows to maintain body condition. Oftentimes they have um, less teeth in the mouth and it's more difficult for them to harvest forage. It's also more difficult to maintain body condition. And when we consider the investment we have to make in these cows to keep them in good condition, uh, the opportunity to recover that cost we've invested in them is less. And then of course, animals that are poor doers should be uh, ones that are considered. Those would be animals that it's difficult for them to maintain body condition. And uh, oftentimes they have too much milk production for the rangeland conditions or they may be too large in size. And then young replacements are going to require an extra investment of feed and, and better quality forage resources. So those are some animals you can consider culling next. And then as the drought gets more severe, then I would suggest that you consider culling some of the two-year-old cows because those are the most difficult to maintain body condition on uh, following calving. And then the last animals to cull would be those cows that are four to seven years of age that are in good body condition. Those are the ones that know the range. They're going to uh, maintain their body condition better and it's going to be easier to keep uh, them pregnant. I would also suggest that uh, it be a consideration to wean the calves earlier than normal in order to allow the cows to main, regain body condition uh, before winter. There are four grades of cull cows. The commercial grade is the highest grade and usually that would be cows that are in a body condition score of six or greater. Most of the time, the cows that you're considering culling from your herd will not fit into that category uh, in the fall after drought unless they're open. The next quality grade for cull cows is utility grade. And so a cow that's in a body condition score five, such as shown here, should easily fit within that grade. The next quality grade is the cutter grade. And so a cow that's in a body condition score four will fit into that quality grade. And then we have the canter grades. Uh, this canter grade, this would be the high end of the canter grade. A cow that's in a body condition score three, maybe three and a half. And then this would be the low end of the canter grade a cow that's in a body condition score two. And these cows are kind of difficult to work with. Uh, you're looking at trying to put 
uh, 150 pounds on them in order to try to get them into a, a better uh, quality grade uh, and to receive more market value. This slide uh, demonstrates the amount of uh, nutrients, the energy that's required to increase the body condition score of a cow. The thinner the cow, the less energy that's required for that gain. And that's because most of the gain for thinner cows is in protein. And protein has about 70% water. And so it uh, takes uh, lower quality feed to, uh, or lesser amount of feed for the gain that you want to achieve. So if we look at a cow in a body condition score three, for example, it takes about six pounds of forage to put a pound of gain on that cow. And most of the time, a dry cow that has weaned uh, calf recently and is trying to regain some body condition will be able to achieve that type of intake in addition to her maintenance requirements. If we look at a cow in a body condition score six, which would be considered somewhat fleshy, it takes about 10 pounds of extra forage to achieve a pound of gain in those cows. And so the uh, opportunity for that cow to do that is uh, not very good because uh, of room and feel and, and those things. And so what I'm trying to point out here is that when we have these thinner animals, it doesn't take a lot of feed to put the gain back on them. And if the feed resources are cheap enough, we can often uh, recover that market value and make a profit by considering this. Now I'm uh, going to transition to Dr. Hernada now, and he's gonna go through some of the market conditions, and then I'll pick up the presentation again after he concludes his uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Jim Sprinkle. Uh, my name's Hernan Tejeda. Uh, I'm assistant professor, extension specialist. Um, of Dairy and Livestock Economics for the University of Idaho. And I will continue on this matter of calling and marketing strategies for drought. I will visit uh, briefly about um, uh, drought conditions being faced. I'll talk a little bit about uh, forage and, and crop markets, and then I'll uh, address market options and, and market conditions for cold cows. So first I wanna show you this drought monitor for August 10, uh, where we can see that the, that the, the west, uh, especially west of the Rockies, but also in the Northern Plains, and, and specifically Idaho, we're, we're quite under extreme or exceptional drought, especially in central Idaho, but also in Northern Idaho. Um, uh, Northeast Washington, Oregon, Central Oregon is also facing extreme or exceptional drought, Utah, California, but also here in the Northern Plains, the Dakotas and, and Minnesota. So if we look now at the US alfalfa hay areas experiencing drought, we can see that in the same region that I uh, it showed before uh, under exceptional extreme drought, we can see the, the areas of major hay production, uh, especially here in Idaho, Southern Idaho, um, Utah, um, Arizona and California, but also in, 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 in the Dakotas. Uh, and so the, this indicates that 64% of alfalfa hay acreage is within an area experiencing drought here in America. Now, what about U.S. cattle areas experiencing drought? Well, of course, all of us, all, all the cattle areas, the major cattle areas in Southern Idaho are, same as in uh, Central and, and Eastern Washington, California, uh, Northern Utah, also Arizona. 
but also in, in as mentioned in the Dakotas and in, in, in Northern Iowa and Minnesota. Not so much uh, in, in the regular plains, uh, Nebraska, Kansas, and others. So uh, more than a third of all cattle inventory is within an area experiencing drought. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about forage and crops. And I say this because uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Patrick Hatzenbuehler, he's the forage and crop specialist. Um, so I'm gonna address a little bit about uh, alfalfa hay monthly average price. This is for farmers all across America. Uh, dollars per ton. And so we see here the red, the thick red is the uh, average for marketing year, starts in May all the way to April, uh, average from 2015, 2016 to 2019, 2020. And so we see that, you know, it starts um, uh, late spring, it started at 178, um, uh, all the way down to around 155 as, as everybody, uh, uh, the last uh, alfalfa was being chopped, but then in the winter it goes up. Uh, last year, prices were a good 10 to $15 above that, uh, given the conditions that, you know, they're all very experiencing dry conditions. And uh, of course, uh, it increased, the difference increased even more during the winter um, and early spring months. This year, it's already at a good $15, $20 above the beginning of, uh, of the other previous years at 198, 195. It's gone up to a little bit below 200. And you know, I fully anticipate these prices being above 200 coming months. If we look to alfalfa hay monthly prices for here in Idaho, um, they're a bit lower. The average, uh, five-year average was between 145 and 153. Uh, but last year's prices were higher uh, as, as dry conditions uh, began appearing. Um, and uh, a good $15 above towards the, the end of last year. And this year's marketing prices uh, in June already have 180. I fully anticipate July being $10, 15 to 190 or above and, and from there on. The other hay, you know, all the, all the other hay besides alfalfa prices, um, for this is across America, it started at uh, 130, down to 120 and, and up to 135 by the end of the 134 uh, by the end of the marketing year. This was the five year average. But again, last year, prices were already uh, a good five, $10 above. And this year, it uh, started at 140, but fully anticipate these prices going higher. Um, in regards to other hay here in Idaho, it has been, the five-year average has been actually higher than last year. Uh, the red prices we see, 150 going up to 160 and then to 147 through the marketing year. Last year, uh, it was a good $10 lower except for August. And then, uh, but this year it started 140, May 155 in June and fully anticipate this to be a good 160 or higher in, in July and then on. Barley prices, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. Uh, Idaho is the number one barley producer. And so we see the five-year average, uh, this is June to May, 2015, 2016, 2019, 2020 covers between 482, the lowest in September, to 533 in April, the following year, five-year average. Last year was a little bit lower, uh, yields improved a little bit, there was better supply, prices dropped a little bit. Uh, but this year, it, um, prices have started a little soft uh, in June, but they've already reached 
the five-year average and, and, and top of last year, the top, and uh, I fully anticipate these prices to be a little bit higher given the, the drought conditions being faced. Uh, if we go, the last uh, crop I'm gonna talk about is wheat. Here in Idaho, prices hovered five-year average between 480 and, uh, and 470 throughout the marketing year. Last year, as, as dry conditions started be affecting, uh, this increased substantially. And this year, they, they are a good uh, 80 cents to almost a dollar higher, and, uh, and it could go up. So having said that, I'm gonna talk now a little bit about market price, markets and, and prices. And here we see some cattle that certainly don't reflect drought conditions, uh, uh, which uh, were well, actually well presented by Jim. The cattle do reflecting appropriately dry conditions. So just gonna talk a little bit about options to market cull cows, um, private treaties, these are definitely encouraged if, if you don't have enough feed, but have good, good cows and good genes, maybe advertise them and, uh, and you may benefit from, from better prices than, than the options below. At the same time, folks who might wanna you know, purchase uh, better improved cows for their herd. Uh, the other option to market cull cow are auctions, of course, either local, or regional. And lastly, uh, packers, if, if you don't have many, you're gonna call maybe through a buying station or you can go directly. Uh, for example, here at CSS and Kuna. Uh, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the federally inspected weekly number of, of uh, beef cows being slaughtered. So these are weekly thousand heads across America, federally inspected. And we can see that the five-year average, um, the first semester was pretty steady, the, the, the first semester of the year from January to, to June, uh, mid-summer, between 48,000 um, weekly up to 55,000. And then as, as summer begins to, to end and, and, and folks and, 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 and fall begins to arrive, folks begin to, to move their cows after weaning. And so this, you know, uh, seasonality, it, 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 the number of cows, of course, being slaughtered in, increases. Uh, the same has been observed, was observed for last year, uh, although during COVID, uh, the dotted line here, we see a drop because many packers closed, but um, we had a good weekly, at least 10,000 uh, numbers higher uh, being called. And of course, at, at, as and during the second semester, these numbers increase um, in regards to the first, first semester. And this year, uh, we actually see a little bit more cow, cows being uh, cows being slaughtered. Sorry. Um, here we're hitting weekly seventy thousand and, and even seventy five thousand during the summer. And I fully anticipate, as mentioned, these numbers to to go a little bit higher as as uh, summer ends and fall begins, folks move their cows. Now let's look a little bit to prices. So these are Southern Plain auction slaughter cow prices, 85 to 90% lean. So these are what uh, pretty much, uh, these are light uh, or, or, or canner cows, uh, weekly prices. So we see, that the five-year average, 2015 to 2019, was around, you know, it began at $67 per hundred weight, all the way up to 76, 77 during uh, late April, early May, um, towards the middle of, of spring. And then after the summer, prices start dropping, of course, uh, because there's, there's a lot more cows being slaughtered. And so uh, it, it went back to 55. If we look at the prices last year, given the, the higher number of slaughtered cows, prices were lower, uh, between $35 went up to 
uh, 55, but then uh, of course started decreasing afterwards. Uh, and this year prices were similar to last year, although a little bit improved over the summer. However, uh, it is anticipated that this number is gonna start dropping. If we look at the prices for these same type of cows, light, Shelly, canner, here in Jerome, Idaho, we see that the five-year average of 2015, 2019, somewhere between 46 and, uh, and $58 towards the summer. And then after that, it started decreasing, of course, uh, in line with, with the Southern Plains and the rest of the country. Uh, towards $43. Last year was up and down, uh, but very similar of the dotted line to the previous five year average, except when going into the summer uh, where there was a glut. Uh, but uh, then it improved a bit and then it, it decreased, of course, um, going into the fall. This year prices have been, again, very, similar, uh, they were quite lower at the beginning of the year, $34, uh, January, February, a lot of cows, cows you know, hitting the market. Um, there's a bounce here, it improved during the summer, but again, as it's seasonal, anticipate this dropping now. Uh, I wanna just show you uh, the numbers for a little bit, improved body condition score. These are uh, cutter, so maybe 80 to 85% lean. Uh, so we see dollar wise that they're, they're improved, that they're even hit 73, $74, starting from 65. This is the five-year average. But then again, uh, after summer ends and fall comes uh, into early winter, they drop substantially. Uh, last year, uh, there was a little bit, prices were a little bit lower um, into the 60s, mid uh, 62, 63 range during the summer, and then uh, decreased a little bit towards $50 uh, going into the fall and winter. This year, uh, prices have been a little bit, I guess, similar to last year, lower than the five-year average, although it reached similar condition, uh, market conditions during July, but um, again, I anticipate it to, to start decreasing. Lastly, I wanna talk uh, a little bit about um, the, the utility commercial cows. These are, are even better body condition scores, maybe, uh, 75 to 80 percent lean and uh, the, the picture is very similar though the dollars per per hundred weight are, are, are improved of course starts at 75 drops 65 but reaches 85 these are in Jerome Idaho again this is the five-year average I'm talking and then it, it starts decreasing up to around 60 dollars last year we had a little bit of a drop in the prices five to ten dollars uh, but similar seasonality this year prices were more in line with last year although improved during the summer but again fully anticipating these to drop so having described all these conditions for 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 uh, feed and and also cattle i'm gonna hand it back to my colleague uh, jim uh, and uh, he will run some options for feeding or not cull cows and how this can uh, have an effect. So thank you very much. Dr. Tejada has shared with you some good information on the market prices for both uh, cull cows and some of the feed commodities. And so now I'd like to go into some strategies uh, on how we can use that information at this time period to consider feeding cull cows or uh, trying to put added value on them before you market them. So looking at the research, what we know is that uh, it's most profitable 
for 30 to 50 days. And after 30 days, then the uh, performance of those animals starts to decline. The uh, healthy cows that are thinner will exhibit compensatory gain for the first 30 to 40 days. And when feeding cold cows, it's most profitable when it occurs during that December to May market swing time period because you're getting the added value that occurs during that time period for uh, the cold cows. We know that cows that are nine years of age or older are least efficient for uh, adding on gain. And then also the young two to three year old cows are most efficient and they will have similar performance uh, to what uh, a yearling steer will have in the feedlot. We can often make money if we're trying to change those cows from a canner to a cutter grade. So that would be taken from a body condition score three and a half to four or greater. On good quality pasture, wean cows or cows that have weaned calves should uh, gain a half to six tenths of body condition score in 30 days. The disadvantage for uh, feeding cold cows is that you are more subject to uh, swings in the market when you're uh, just in doing this over such a short time period. Looking at some research from New Mexico State University, they compared different age groups of cows for feed efficiency. And we're gonna be describing the pounds of feed required per, per pound of gain. The three to four year old cows in this 54 day feeding period had a feed efficiency of six to one. And then from five to six year old cows, it increased to to seven to one, at seven to eight years of age, the feed efficiency was eight pounds of feed per pound of gain. And for nine-year-old cows and older, it was 10 to one. But I should mention that all of these age groups of cows had a feed efficiency of less than six pounds of feed per pound of gain during the day 15 to 42. So again, early on in the feeding period, there's greater feed efficiency as you get that compensatory gain. So I did some uh, some cost uh, some cost of gain with some uh, least cost rations for looking at some different feed commodities. The first ration in this table is going to be 70% uh, concentrate ration, which would be uh, what is often used for uh, these uh, coal cows because they're wanting to get as much gain as quick as they can. And then the next ration would be uh, about a 20% uh, grain ration, it's ac actually 18% was what came in on the least cost. And that's what we often use to try to get cows to a body condition score of five before calving if they're thin. And this is to try to put about two pounds of gain on them per day. At today's market prices for feed commodities, uh, it, was, it was not able to show a profit with uh, feeding with these two different feed strategies, with the exception of feeding cows from a three and a half to four body condition score for the high grain ration. At the bottom of the table, I have the value of the weight gain for each of those categories, canner, cutter, or utility grades, and then we're looking at taking a cows from a three to a three and a half, from a three and a half body condition to a four, from a four to a five, and then feeding them at a five body condition. So any of the numbers that are in red in this table, 
the cost of the gain is greater than the value of the gain that we achieve uh, with that weight gain. So I looked at what would it take to get uh, to a profitable situation with uh, feeding, and you'd need to get the feed prices down to 130 to $140 a ton, uh, and which would be kind of difficult to achieve with the current market conditions, unless you had a source of uh, cheap roughage, uh, like, uh, for instance, soybean holes or something like that. I really would uh, think hard about trying to put straw into the diet. Usually you have to have that TDN of the forage be about 56% or greater, and it's going to be difficult to get the gains you need with that. But uh, the other two options I looked at was considering putting the cows on irrigated pasture. And this is a higher quality pasture. It's got 64% TDN. And I put a cost on it at $25 per animal unit month. And then uh, it was profitable for all of those different categories of body condition. Uh, and then looking at a rested pasture, like a rangeland pasture, a little cheaper AUM rate, but also less quality at 56% TDN. And for that, we were also able to show profitability in feeding three of the different groups of cows out and trying to achieve a higher quality grade. We did not show uh, a profitable outcome for cows that are already in a body condition score five. So those cows probably just need to go right on to market. And looking at these different strategies uh, and the profitability over a 30 day feeding period, the most profitable one was uh, the irrigated grass pasture. And uh, we went from a high of over $30 profit for a month of feeding and uh, to a low of around $18 when we get into that body condition score five. So this would certainly be uh, something to consider if the cows, some of them are thin and you need to put a little more condition on them. When we looked at the uh, rangeland pasture, it was profitable for uh, three to three and a half, three and a half to four, and a four to five. It was not profitable when the cows were already in a body condition score five. And it was uh, not a whole lot of profit when that cows were in a three to three and a half. The only time the 70% uh, concentrate ration was profitable was when you took cows from the three and a half to four but it was a very small uh, profit of less than $2 per head for a month's uh, feeding. And then uh, the 20% or 18% wheat and 82% alfalfa ration, it was not profitable during any time period because of the prices of the feed commodities at this time. So I hope uh, this is helpful. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to con contact either myself or Dr. Tahada, and uh, we'll be glad to try and uh, answer those questions for you. And uh, there are other videos that you may want to watch on this channel that uh, has this and other presentations related to drought.